Let's analyze harmonic motion a little bit. Because we know when we keep up with the kinematics of something, we like to know position and velocity and acceleration, because that lets us calculate kinetic energy and momentum and potential energy, et cetera, et cetera. So we said we're going to describe the sinusoidal motion with, or I'm sorry, the harmonic motion with a sinusoid like that. So this is the position x versus time t. And we know that it does this because we know it goes up and down. Let's see. The formula we use to describe this motion is x is some amplitude a times sine. And then we had 2 pi times the frequency times time. So we can look at it and ask ourselves a few things. We could say, let's put a circle um, on the uh, maximum position. So everywhere that it goes to this largest position is basically the peaks of the sinusoid. Here it's at plus a, here it's at minus a, plus a, minus a. We could also say, let's put an open square on the maximum velocity, or speed, uh, velocity. Uh, let's say speed. So we don't have to worry about up or down. Let's just say how fast the, the magnitude, the speed. So the maximum speed, one way to get it is to know the formula for the speed. Right? So here we have a description of the position at first is time. You can actually write the speed versus time. You're really taking a derivative of this, if you know how to do that. And that is 2 pi a f. And then the sine turns into cosine. Two, and this part stays the same, 2 pi f t. Okay. So if you were to ask, where's the maximum speed, that would occur wherever the cosine function is at its maximum. Or you can think in terms of speed uh, being the, the derivative or the slope of the position curve. And that would tell you the speed, maximum speed, occurs here. And it occurs here. And basically, it occurs when it goes through the axis when it goes through the, the middle of the axis. That's when the slope is maximum. And if you were to plot this function, this is a cosine, where would it have? Let's see, it would have a maximum here. Sure enough, it would have a maximum here, and it would go down, and it would have a minimum here. Right? And it would go up and have a maximum here. So this does describe, in the right way, the, the maximum speed. The magnitude of the maximum velocity, the speed, the maximum speed, is this. 2 pi v max is 2 pi a the amplitude times the frequency. So you got meters here, you got hertz, which is 1 over seconds, so you get meters per second. If you really wanted to do all of kinematics, you could also ask, where is the maximum acceleration? All right, so as this thing is moving up and down, we see we have its maximum position. Is it the endpoints going up and down? Its maximum speed, you can kind of tell. It's when it's at the zero, when it's at the, the, the middle level, is when it's moving fastest. But the maximum acceleration is actually back up here. So I'll draw it with a triangle. The maximum acceleration is when it stops moving briefly. Okay. So here is maximum acceleration. And we could write a formula for the acceleration. Again, if you know how to take derivatives, that's all we're doing here. And this is uh, now 4 pi squared. A, we pull out another frequency, f. So we've pulled it out twice. Cosine goes back to sine, 2 pi f t. And you're all hoping I'll make a mistake, but I won't, because I'll make it negative. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So there, you see it's a sine function again. So a sine function should have the same maximum places as the position sine function. And they do. That's why you have the biggest amplitude here. And here, again, is the magnitudes. Of, of the acceleration here. And the value is this, 4 pi squared a f squared. a max 4 pi squared a f squared. And you can also see, it even makes sense, that at this point, that's the maximum uh, x position up positive. But it says it's the maximum acceleration down. And it is accelerating down. 
right? You can see that uh, it's moving up, the velocity is up, but the velocity is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing. So the acceleration is down. So at this point, the a vector would be down like that. The position vector would be up. The velocity vector would be 0. At this point, the velocity vector is, is down. It's moving down, but you can see from the slope. So all this stuff about the motion uh, kind of makes sense. I've done all this describing the motion as a sine. And you can do the whole thing describing it as a cosine. Okay? So a sine says at time equals 0, uh, the position is 0. But you could also say, maybe I'll start at a different time. And maybe I'll have the case that, um, that I'll start it at a maximum up here at time equals 0 and then do a sinusoid like that. And you can. Then you're just describing it as a cosine. x equals a cosine 2 pi f t v equals minus a, uh, 2 pi a f uh, sine 2 pi f t. It all follows through. The maximum values are basically the same in this case. Um, so if your book, if the book you're using describes it as sine or describes it as cosine, it's really the same. The difference is just how does it start? What's happening at, at, at time equals zero? There are even ways, if you introduce a phase factor, to have it start here. We won't get into that. We're just going to do the basics. What are the amplitudes and how fast is it going? 